Alrighty, so I've been wanting to do this video for a while now to talk about the Philadelphia Union and how it has just completely bought them out uh, in terms of how, how this team has. And uh, for a team that has been, for the past couple of years, been one of the most consistent team in the Eastern Conference and this main core uh, that is anchored by, by Jim Curran that have regularly reached to the playoffs and go deep into the playoff as well and also compete in other competition. And this, had, this season, I mean, it has just completely fallen apart to a point where I've already mentioned many times before that it feels like the rebuild is about to happen and that this current core player that they, of course, have would not be surprised by the time when we see the offseason. It's going to be, be completely tear, tear it down because of how bad things have gone for this team. Now, how bad has things gone for this Union team? Well, try being dead last in the Eastern Conference. So when I say that they bought them out, I really mean it. They're right now at the bottom of the Eastern Conference with a 4, 9, and 10 record, and they currently have 21 points. What's crazy to say say is that despite the fact that they're dead last right now in the Eastern Conference, they have scored 37 goals so far this season. Like, that is more than any of the team that is uh, below the rant line right now, and that it is pretty clear that the goal scoring is not the issue for this Philadelphia Union team. The big issue of this team, obviously, is, is the defense, and in some extent, the the, the goalkeeping as well, because they've given up 41 goal this season. If you want to tell me that this would be a team that giving up 41 goal this season and, and and we're not even in the Leeds Cup break, you would think that that's kind of insane. And that's that's more that, than they, they have conceded um in in the past couple of years. And that, that, you know, this is a union team that for a long time, it's all not only the fact that they have a very good attack, but their defense has always been, been a solid foundation. And obviously, I know they, they clearly miss Andre Blake in, in, in this season. But even then, before Andre Blake went, went down with his long-term injury, he was not having a good season for the Union, too. And that defense that the Union, of course, had with the, the likes of, uh, of Jacob, Jacob Lesnes and Jack Elliott kind of anchoring, those two guys has just been kind of non-existent uh, this, this season. And, of course, they have a goal differential of minus four. Now, looking at um, where this kind of gone wrong, and I specifically decided to pick the date of April 6th because, uh, one, you know, April was really kind of the time when this really started to fall apart uh, for this team. In fact, um, I'm going to talk about this 18-game stretch where they actually went this 18-game stretch with two wins. And if you... Don't count the game where they won 2-1 on the road against Nashville. They only won one time in the last 17 games. If you go half of the season and only win one game, not only the fact that you're not going to make it to the, the playoffs, but yeah, it's no surprise the Union is currently dead, dead last in, in the, the standings. like that. That is wooden spoon type of run if you go one win in the la last 17 games and not to... To mention during this this 17 game run where they only have one win, there were a stretch where they had some brutal losing streak and also record breaking losing streak, especially at home. That is not a good good kind of record that the Union want want to break. Now, uh, as I mentioned, they did win two one against Nashville on the road, and again back then they were actually still doing very well. They were still above the the red line, and this was actually a after when they kind of got off to a slow start to the season, but then uh, they started to to re rebound to a point where it feels like yeah everybody thought that this is the union team that that, that we know and look like they're they're on course to make another good, good good run in the regular season and and carry that into the playoffs and that again the other thing that coming into this season for the union is that this might be the last last season we're going to see this current core before they have to, to strip it down especially with the way that some of their core piece players there are, there's definitely some some interest in terms of them moving to Europe, and as I'll talk about in, in just a bit, one of those pieces have already moved on uh, to Europe. Uh, but after that, they got a two-two draw on the road against uh, Atlanta. You know, it wasn't a really bad bad resort because Atlanta uh, back then was still just like the Union was also a pr pretty good team and in pretty good position uh, in the MLS standings. Well, then that this is when the losing begins, and this is when 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 it's the beginning of. of what would be the longest losing streak that they have ever had at Subaru Park. Uh, they lost 2-1 uh, at home against RSL, lost 3-2 at home against Seattle. It, uh, then it was a 2-2 draw that they had against DC United on the road before losing 3-2 to Orlando City. And then they lost 2-1 to NYCFC to make it four loss in a row. And I think at that point, that was the record in terms of the most 
uh, loss that they have ever had at Subaru Park. Subaru Park used to be be the the toughest place for for teams to play. The Union. Doing the, those good run that they, they had for the past couple of years under Jim Curran, not only is it a team that 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 uh, have a very good good record, one of the reasons why they have a good record is not just because they're very good on the road, but also at home they're unbe- uh, 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 unbeatable. I mean, there was uh, one part of the season, I think during the COVID season, they pretty much finished the whole season without not only a, a sink single loss but also they didn't drew at all they won every single game at home and then that was kind of the case to a couple years where they also went unbeaten at home so again Subaru Park was just an absolute fortress nobody could be going to 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 Philly and expect to to walk away with free point let alone walk you'd be lucky to try to walk away with a point so so to see them losing four in a row like this not only was very ununion like but again this is when you you start to to see that yeah this this is this is very on un- un- not normal for 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 this core and that this might be where where you know there's that old saying that if you decide to run run it back and if you run it back too too much especially if you don't make some improvement then it eventually is not going to work and i think this is kind of the the thing that we're seeing with this team where they run it back so many times that they clearly are started to 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 fall part and teams have started to figure it out because they, they haven't really made any improvement and while the, the curtain core that they the of pieces that they have is still pretty good especially on the attack again um yeah it, it it's if you don't make some improvement throughout the season you're gonna get fined out and and being left behind then um in the next game they did win three nothing against new england in that desperation derby and keep in mind uh the this was the only time that the union have won doing the 17th game stretch because it's back uh with them uh going on a bit of a winless run uh they did get a couple of draws in fact they had three straight draw where they got a new new draw against charlotte a new new draw uh, uh against toronto to end that four game losing streak uh at home and then they drew 2-2 uh, uh against Mont- montreal and again those resort while well, the charlotte resort was pretty good because charlotte was a really really good team especially at home uh the new new draw at home against toronto was not so so good even though Back then, Toronto was still actually doing pretty well before they themselves have, have folded uh, apart and folded in the, the last month or two. But the Montreal Resort is definitely alarming because Montreal, again, um, and you got to remember, that was a game where I think the Union were 2 nothing down in that one and they came came back to get get a resort. So if they didn't come back, that would have been an embarrassing resort because Montreal has been been, been very bad this season uh, on on the, the road and we're not having a good season even up to that that point so to lose that game i mean you know alarm bells have already started ringing i'm pretty sure there's there's full ball panic mode by, by that time if the union did lose that game against montreal but in the next game where they play uh, against inter miami and keep in mind this is a an inter miami team that did not have the likes likes of messi and, and and some of these superstar players they still lost that game they lost 2-1 uh at home against inter miami and then in in the game where they play uh, against Cincinnati, um, the team that's currently at the at the top of the supporter show standing. Ironically, that was probably the best game that the Union have played throughout this stretch. Like the Union have played some really brutal games throughout throughout this this uh, losing stretch, but this was probably the the best game that that they play, especially on the attacking end, where they were really going toe to toe with FC Cincinnati, but ultimately fall in the end and lose four three in that one because, as a reminder, their their defense rip. Really sucked this season. Um, then they lost at home, home two nothing against Charlotte. Again, you know, that that's what one, uh, two, three, four, uh, five, six games that they ha- ha- have lo- lost. Uh, at at home doing the this stretch and six losses. Uh, doing this stretch is it, pretty much more than than they have ever done in in the last four or five seasons that they have at at home at Super Bowl park and that it, it just kind of just shows you how the almighty has has been fall, fallen when it comes to to the the, the home form and how, how the the mighty fortress have also been been fallen at Subaru park where no longer teams fear going to to philly and and worry that they're not going to get anything out of it it feels like every single game teams are expected that they're going to at least get a point or even all three points because the union somehow just cannot win this season at home and then, uh, to make matters worse, they lost 4-2 against Montreal. Again, this was a Montreal team that ha- hasn't, hasn't been on a good run lately, and they gave, gave up four goals to them to lose that game. And then I think the, the icing on the cake, and this is pretty much when, when uh, if, if Union fans haven't hit panic 
uh, hard enough uh, so far doing this bad run, this is the game to do so. And this this really is when when I, I think think a lot of Union fans are saying that it is time to absolutely tear down the, this core. Because in that game where they, they lost 4-3 against Chicago, they didn't just lose that game. They lost that game while they were leading 3-1 in, in that, that one. And again... You know, one of the other thing that you, you you rarely see a a Jim Curran Union side do, uh, well, at least in the regular se season that is, is blown leads. They do not blow leads very often. They do not give up uh leads, especially in the second half in in the regular season. And not only the fact that they blow a lead in in that game against Chicago, they blew it while they were up three three one in in the last ten ten minutes of of the the game and just uh completely self self destruct. In that game against the Chicago Fire. Well, actually, I take that back when they said that they're free one. I think uh, Chicago did get one back around the 70th minute mark, but still, oh, uh, they they were up in that that game, and really, the, it was just an absolute meltdown that we saw uh, in stoppage time by by the Philadelphia Union. And again, that that was kind of the game that really just kind of sum sums up the Union re recent run, where you know it's bad when when the Union are blowing leads, and that the confidence level of this team was at an all time low right now then they got a new new draw against the new york red bulls and i would say that they were kind of fortunate that they got a new new draw because the red bulls again uh one of the things i've mentioned before that's that they can't fin finish right now now um uh, and then uh in the most recent game that they had again if you thought that we haven't got to uh to, to, to the low part of, uh, of this bad run that they had they would go on on the road against a, a struggling toronto team a team that as I even mentioned in my preview, this is kind of a desperation derby between two teams that are trying to snap out of, of their, their woeful run that they've been on. They lost that one, 2-1. And, and they lost that game, game when they were up 1-0 uh, for the majority of the game and then just give up two two late goals to uh, just, again, dang, uh, lose all three points in this one. And this is where we stand right now with them at a 4-9 and 10 record and look at the ne next five games and this of course includes uh the the leeds cup at, as well because we're actually get, getting pretty close in terms of the the mls break for leeds cup we actually got a uh, one week of mls soccer left uh this middle midweek action and then the weekend's action before we're not going to have mls action in, until uh uh near the end of august uh, they play against New England in, in the next game at, at home again. That could be also a desperation dar derby because New England started to cool off after they had a pretty hot June. Uh, then they play against Nashville again, another game where it could be a desperation derby because Nashville has just came came off of back to back games where where they got bumped uh, by their their opposition. And then uh, in Leeds Cup, uh, they play uh, against Charlotte at home. Yeah, I don't have a lot a lot of faith that that they're gonna do very well. Uh, so so with with that that game with the way that Charlotte has has just looked really good lately. I mean, they they just came off of a win uh recently uh against uh the team that 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 is currently at the top of the standings that is FC Cincinnati, and then they of course play against Cruz Azul, and I'm actually typing to see how the standing is right now uh in Liga MX. Uh, Liga MX actually just started the their their season, and I, I just look at here. Oh, guess what? Cruz Azul is first place. In, in the Apertor se season, even though um, I know it's only two games into the season, but they have got six points so far, five goals scored, no goals conceded. So yeah, good luck Union in terms of facing against a team that have definitely been been, been uh, untouchable, at least in the first two games of the season, that, that is Cruz Azul. Then after the Leeds Cup is over, because, you know, most likely their, their Leeds Cup uh, uh, run might be short, although again, one of the thing about the Leeds Cup, and say what you say about about the Leeds Cup, and and the the fact fact that it clearly should be 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 abolished because of, of the way that it ru ruins other competition, especially historic competition like the the U.S. Open Cup. It is a way for teams to 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 have are, are not doing well in the league, and a way for for them to to once again just kind of use that as an opportunity to completely reset set what they they their season is. Because if you can win the Le Leeds Cup. Whether you like it or, or not, it is going to consider to be a trophy and a way to to not only uh, say that, well, yeah, it's a bad season in the league, but hey, we won this this competition, and this competition still gets us back into the CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see whether or not at the Union, I'm assuming they're going to take that very seriously considering, you know, it's a lost season when it comes 
to the regular season. I don't think they're going to make it to, to the, the playoffs, which would be the first time since, I think, 2018 or 2017, if I'm not mistaken, that they have not made it to the playoffs. They made it to the playoffs uh, consistently in the past couple of years, and it hasn't even been close in term, terms of, uh, of them making it to the playoffs. They've always been a top, top four team in the, the play, playoffs for the past couple of years. Uh, but then returning from, from Leeds Cup, and again, this is where they really would want to take Leeds Cup seriously because after this, yeah, it's pretty clear clear that it, if there is any hope that they can maybe co come back and, and go on a on a crazy run to finish off the season. They have to play against, right now, arguably the hottest team in the league that is the Columbus Crew. Then they have to go on the road to play against the Red Bulls, a Red Bulls team that have been very good this season at home. And then they have to play Messi and friends uh, uh, down down in, in Fort Lauderdale. So, yeah, those are three teams. That is the last three teams that the Union want to, to face if they want to maybe have a miraculous run uh, toward, toward the home stretch of the season to make it to, to the playoffs. So, again, Leeds Cup is kind of what, what they will really play focus on, even though uh, it's hard to believe that uh, if I would told you that in the beginning of the season that the Union would be the weakest uh, team out of that group between them and Charlotte and Cruz Azul, you would have to think that that was the, the case, but that's kind of the reality. I mean, you know, Charlotte and Cruz Azul, both of them are doing very good in the league, and it will be a big challenge for, for the Union to to uh, be able to move on. The good news is, uh, those two games are at, at, at home. The bad news is, is that this season they have not been great uh, at, at home compared to previous season. Now, looking at the top goal scored and top assist leader, and Look at the numbers. Again, it's not really that bad. And for a team that is currently dead last in the East, you would not expect there would be a guy that had double-digit goal scoring, but that's what's what Daniel Gastek has, has put. And this is even during his time that he's missing with, with this team during the, the Euros with Hungary. He still scored 11 goals. And then you got, got Julian Carranza with six goals. Obviously, I put a star there because Julian Carranza is no longer with the Union. He have transferred to a fine or not. Not long ago. Then you got Mikel Uru with six goals. Uh, Ty Baribo, a guy that started to kind of came out of nowhere to really become, become an, an, an impact piece. And, you know, we talk about this deep rebuild that the Union could potentially be, be, be have to face. Well, I, I think the attack maybe might not be the one that they, they might need to need rebuild. Because they do have so, still some good good attacking pieces. And especially... Uh, the midfield uh, as well as well, and especially with the way way that I, I can't wait to to see uh, the debut of Kevin Sullivan uh, with the way that it seems like he's going to be 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 in action with this first team and could potentially break the record for the youngest player to ever appear in an MLS game. And you know, if we believe that he is, of course, going to be the 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 next best thing. Oh, uh, that could be be a good thing uh, for this Union team, and then of course, uh, Jake. Uh, Jack McGlynn with three, three goals as well. Top assist leader, you, you have Kyle Wagner with seven assists. Uh, Jack McGlynn with five assists. Quinn Sullivan with five assists. Uh, Alejandro Bedoya with three assists. And Nathan Hario uh, with three assists uh, on this team. But again, you know, going forward, I would not be surprised that next season we're going to see see different names, especially in 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 the, the fans and that it is pretty clear that the, 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 the window might, might have officially slammed shut uh, for for this team, unless of course if it's the the Leeds Cup, because you know in the Leeds Cup since it's a tournament, it's a crap crap shoe kind of kind of tournament. Uh, there's still a chance that they can can take some some silverware, but you know if they're going to do do so, then yeah, that really is kind of the last competition to do so. What a tra tragedy is it is to see how this team has just completely fall apart like that. And I know every t big main core is going to eventually have this period where it just completely fall apart and and and, and in a whimper. But what's sad about the Union is that doing this amazing core that they have, while they have been consistently become a, a, a good team and even won the Supporters' Shield uh, in, in 2020, they didn't get to the ultimate goal that they wanted out of this core, and that, of course, is win MLS Cup. I mean, that was kind of the, the thing that, that eluded them for a lot, and they came so close to do so in 2022. In fact, if it wasn't for Gareth Bell scoring that header in, in, in stoppage time, they probably would be the one that, that won one MLS Cup doing that season, but the bottom line is, um, you know, I'm pretty sure Union fans, as much as that, they're very happy in terms of the good memories that this team brought uh, a couple of years ago, they would be also very frustrated the fact that they didn't really win a lot of things that is meaningful besides the the, the supporter. You know, I mean, winning the supporter show is still still important. I don't care what and anybody they say. Winning the supporter show 
it is a great achie achievement, especially doing it for the entire season, but not being able to to win the ultimate prize that is MLS Cup, it is going to really, really uh, kind of uh, leave a mark in ter terms of this core could have been 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 doing uh, doing even best thing and can even uh achieve even more greater glory, um, uh, but now it seems like that's in the past because, like I said, they have to go through a rebuild. Uh, heading into this offseason we're going to see some new pieces on this team and some old pieces gone with it, this team but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and if you're a union fan i mean i'm pretty sure that they're thinking about see you next season mode except for for the the, the leads cup that that is but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time